SpaceX closes in on their next super heavy launch, Starlink hits a milestone, Dragon delivers diversity to the space station, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Last Friday, I covered the Booster 9 static fire SpaceX lit up just moments prior, but later that evening, the company shared some more angles and info of the event, so I want to make sure everyone was aware of it before we talked about what's coming on the horizon. The booster did successfully light all 33 Raptors, producing about 8 million pound force of thrust. However, during the six second burn, two shut down prematurely, which is obviously better than four engines flaming out during the previous static fire that only lasted 2.5 seconds, halfway through its planned duration. Congrats to the team on this exciting milestone. So what's expected next on the march toward an orbital launch attempt is a mating of the upper stage Starship with this booster. B9 has just received its upgraded FTS charges in the case SpaceX needs to give her a dependable clacking. And its ship, S25, is currently stationed up Highway 4 and is completing its final touch-ups with the heat shield, and will be departing for the launch site any day now. After the full stack has happened, there will be a pre-flight checklist of sorts to complete that will include a wet dress rehearsal, probably even with the mock countdown. And again, there's the FAA. SpaceX still needs their launch license approved by the governing agency. WAPO's Christian Davenport x that from what he's hearing, the actual launch is still weeks away, even though the notice to Mariners begins September 8th. And modifications like the new splash pad need to be approved. Of course, if Uncle Sam drags his feet long enough, it wouldn't surprise most of us if Elon just sends it, brah. You guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. <laughs> Ask for forgiveness, not permission. Merka. On to Starlink now. On Saturday night, Falcon 9 carried 22 Starlink satellites to Leo from Slip 40, Florida, putting a total Starlink tally over 5,000. The booster flew for its third mission, touching down on Just Read the Instructions, bobbing on the Atlantic Ocean. Then on Thursday evening, 22 more were given a ride to the heavens from the same pad and deployed successfully about an hour later. The booster landed for its seventh time on a shortfall of Gravitas. On Saturday morning, Crew 7 boosted off the Earth's crust and into Earth orbit from a couple pads over at 39A. And this off. Go Falcon, go Dragon, go Crew 7. And with it, humanity's ESG score through DEI. So everyone give yourself a pat on the back for being so righteous. Dragon separated from the second stage and began its 30 hour coast to the space station. A sloth came along for the ride. At least I think that's what their zero G indicator is. The capsule rendezvoused and docked with the ISS at 9.16 a.m. on Sunday. The first stage for this launch came in hot for contact with LZ-1. Due to the unfortunate Florida weather as of late, Crew-6 is now targeting a splashdown off its coast no earlier than Sunday morning. Shouts. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. Starfield is back as our honorable mention, because there's nothing else to talk about. A space-based exploration game that has players encounter story missions and points of interest while exploring a galaxy with more than a thousand planets. This new Bethesda franchise just released last night for some PC and Xbox players, including me, so I'll be live streaming some gameplay on Rumble soon for those interested. The link to that channel is below. Okay. Thanks for stopping by, thanks for your support, and have a nominal weekend. Until next Friday, Godspeed.